Hello, and welcome to the Invent with Scratch screencast. I'm Al Swigert, and in this screencast, we're going to make a small maze game. We can move this cat around using the arrow keys on our keyboard. You notice the cat can't go through the walls, even if we try. And the objective of the game is to get to the very end of the maze. So let's go into how to create this program step by step. Go ahead and start up the Scratch editor by clicking on Create. And the first thing we'll do is we'll import our maze image. Now we could draw it ourselves by painting a new sprite, but instead I'm going to go to the inventwithscratch.com website, and then click on the download section, and just grab this maze image by right-clicking on it and saving the image. And then back in the Scratch editor, I can upload this image from my computer to the Scratch Editor by clicking on Upload Sprite from File. Perfect. Now we'll just move the cat out of the way. Well, that cat is way too big for this maze. I'm going to have to grab the Shrink tool and then click several times on this cat to shrink it down. Eh, there we go. So we want our program to move the cat around whenever the player presses on the arrow keys on the keyboard. So in the brown events category, I'm going to grab this when green flag clicked block. And then from the orange controls category, I'm going to grab the forever block. And so this will run through the code that's in here forever. So we want it to check if a arrow key is being held down. So I'll grab the if block, and then from the light blue sensing category, I'll grab this key pressed block and fit it inside the condition socket for that if block. I'm going to change this by clicking on the black triangle to left arrow. So this code will control moving the cat to the left. And to actually move the cat sprite, I'll go to the dark blue motion category and grab this change x by block. You want to be sure to grab the change x by and not the set x2 block. And since we're changing the x coordinate to go left, we need to have this be a negative number. I'll say negative 4. Now we could go back and add all those other blocks for the other arrow directions, but I'm going to make a small shortcut. I'm going to right click on the if block and then select duplicate, and that'll give us a duplicate set of all the blocks already. And all I have to do now is just change this to right arrow. And since we're moving in the right direction, I want to change x by 4 instead of negative 4. Then I can duplicate this all over again by right clicking on the top if block and selecting duplicate. And we'll have these if blocks control moving up and moving down. We don't want to change the x coordinate, we want to change the y coordinate. So get rid of these blocks just by dragging them over the center area. And go back to the dark blue motion category and grab those change y by blocks. And for the up arrow direction, we want to change this by 4. And for the down direction, we want to change it by negative 4. So let's click on the green flag and test this program out. Oh, that's pretty good. Well, the cat moves up, down, left, and right, but we don't want the cat to be able to move around the maze right through the walls like that. Also, the cat looks kind of spooky just gliding around, so we're going to add a walking animation too. So I'm going to click on the red stop button to stop the program. Let's also have the cat always start at the beginning of the maze when the program first starts up. So I'm going to grab this go to x, y block and put it right at the start, right before the forever loop. So that means that no matter where the cat is, when we click the green flag, the cat will move back to the start of the maze. Now to animate this cat, the sprite comes with two different costumes. So you can click on the costumes tab in the center to see them. And if we switch between the two costumes, we can get a sort of walking animation. And there's some programming blocks that let us switch the costumes. They'll be under the purple looks category. You can grab this next costume block and go ahead and put one next costume block inside each if block.
Now when we click on the green flag, cat has a nice walking animation. Now we want to change the program so that the cat can't just go through the walls. And the way we'll do that is by checking if the cat is touching the black color of the walls. And if so, we'll cancel out whatever movement it just made. So inside this if left arrow block, we're going to add a new if block from the orange control section. And this will check if the cat sprite is touching the black maze wall. So in the light blue sensing category, grab this touching color block. We want it set so that if the cat is touching the black maze color wall. So we'll have to change this color by clicking on that color square and then clicking on the black of the maze walls. Now to undo the leftward motion that the cat just made because the user pressed the left arrow key, we're going to add a change x by block, except this block will change x by 4. So when the user presses the left arrow, the cat moves to the left, but if the cat ends up touching the black maze walls because of moving to the left, we'll have it counteract that by just moving back 4 pixels to the right. And we'll need this for each direction, because if you click on the green flag right now, You'll see the cat can't move through the walls to the left. Each time it's moving, it gets moved back by 4 pixels, back to its original position. But the cat can still move up and down and right through the walls. So I'll click on the red stop button to stop the program. I'll go ahead and right click on this if block to duplicate it for the other if blocks. So for the right arrow case, in this case to cancel out that movement, I'll need to change this to negative 4. And I'll duplicate that again for the up arrow if block. But we don't want to change x, we want to change y for this block. So I'll get rid of that and grab this change y by block. And since this is changing it by 4, to cancel that we'll have to change it by negative 4. And then I can duplicate that one more time. and have that change y by 4. So let's test this program out. I'll click on the green flag, and we can't go up through the walls, or left through the walls, or down through the walls, or right through the walls. That's perfect. So I'm going to click on paint a new sprite to make a small red x at, that we can put at the very end of the sprite. So just Something really simple, X. And I'll move that to the very end of the maze. Now let's add some code to the cat sprite so that it detects if it's touching the end goal sprite right here. Actually, let's change the name of this from something other than the generic sprite 2. Click on that info panel, change this to goal. So from the orange control category, I'll grab this if block. And then from the light blue sensing category, I'll grab this touching block. So if the cat sprite is touching the goal, then we'll just have the cat say I won. And we can do that in the purple looks category. We'll grab this say hello for two seconds. Except instead of hello, I'll click on that and change that to say I won. So let's test this program out. Yep, this way, nope, oh, nope, another dead end. Oh, eh. oh, hey, I won. Perfect. I'll click the red stop button to stop the program. You might want to add some more code that prevents the cat from just walking around the maze entirely and cheating. But I'll leave that up to you. Now if you want new mazes, you can either draw some yourself, or you can go online and go to Google and just search for Maze Generator Online. 
And there are several websites that will just automatically generate mazes for you. I can click on this first link at mazegenerator.net and you can see we can just keep generating as many different mazes as we want. So that's the entire program. In this screencast we learned how to upload new sprites that we download off the internet. We also learned how to keep sprites from walking through other sprites by canceling out their motion uh, after detecting if they're touching a certain color. So I hope you found this screencast helpful. I'm Al Swigert, and thanks for watching.